this the end of our civilization? Prepare for gaming domination. The mightiest monster of them all. Grimlock the Dino 9, Gamezilla. Welcome to the Games of the Podcast, your last line of defense in major gaming news. I'm your host, Grimlock, and with me in the Games of the Media Studios, my co-host, my audio producer, Deadite. That's all I got. Oh, okay. I was I was waiting for the Deadite night. Nope. I just cut it. Deadite. I'm I'm now just Deadite, you know, just like I didn't do Grimlock of the Dino, I just did Grimlock, so then I just did Deadite. Okay. I wasn't ready for we're it. We're, we're already super late, so I'm cutting every... Okay, yep. and then we're going to... And then I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> and when the show's over, that's been episode 277. Yeah. Wait a second. Why are we late? What took us so long to get started this week? Well, we had to kind of, you know, bring in a new member and get him all, all set up, make sure that he was comfortable doing all this wild video stuff, but I would like to introduce... On his first episode as the new video producer, Player One Mickey. What up? He gets his full name this this episode only. I swear. Hey. Oh yes. That yes. Next thing he'd be P One Me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> P One M. Moving on. It's the same me anytime. But anyway, there we go. <laughs> it does not increase the brevity. Uh, yeah. Welcome to episode two hundred and seventy-seven of the Games Little Podcast, brought to you by. Our supporters at patreon.com slash GameZilla Media. And it's you, the patrons that make the GameZilla podcast possible every single week. And we appreciate it immensely. You can start your patronage at as low as just one little dollar per month. And uh, I'll get you, you know, some special perks here with the GameZilla podcast. But the real prizes come in at the exclusive content level, which is available for you at just $5 per month and gives you access to... Gamezilla shows that aren't available on any of our regular podcast feeds. Like, you get a bonus episode from the Last Action Podcast, a bonus episode from the Legend of Retro, boys, bonus episode of Noiseland Arcade. You get behind the DM screen and returning very soon after a couple month hiatus, the Dungeon of Doom, my pro wrestling podcast. So, oh, it's coming back? It's coming back. I, I you know, I, uh, Part of it was a scheduling thing. Part of it was I kind of haven't really been watching WWE since May because it's awful. Um, but, I, <laughs> you know, there's a lot going on in the world of wrestling right now, and I, I, I want an outlet to be able to talk to people about it and teach people about it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, this fall is going to be one of the hottest times in the world of pro wrestling. So if you even have a remote interest in that and you become a patron, you're going to learn a little bit more, and I will be your gateway drug into uh, the silly fictional world of grown men pretending to fight. Gateway drug? Yeah, doesn't that sound fun? Gateway drugs? <sighs> doesn't it sound fun? This was, we were, we're, we're a podcast about video games. But also about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's news to me. Okay, let's get into the news. <laughs> You're naive. It's always been about drugs. I'm searching the web for the latest gaming news. Searching GameZillaMedia.com. Downloading headlines. All right, topic number one. Nintendo came out and uh, dropped another Nintendo Direct on us. They sure did. And we have all sorts of stuff to talk about. Uh, Nintendo's kind of a deadite thing. I'm going to let him kind of steer this one. So what did we learn from the Nintendo Direct? Because I know some things leaked early, but overall, I'd say it was a pretty pretty packed uh, Direct for Nintendo. Yeah, they, they, they crammed a bunch of stuff in there for us. Uh, some of it was stuff we knew from leaks. Some of it was things that came as a total surprise. And some of it was dreams fulfilled. Now... Um, I want to start off with what was the the leaked the leaked thing that they started the direct off with, and it leaked due to I believe an Amazon list. Damn it, Amazon! Uh, on less than a week before the Nintendo Direct, an Amazon listing for a new Switch case with the Overwatch logo was on it. Yep, and everyone was like, "That's it, we're finally getting it." The game that 
Brim and I and a lot of Nintendo Switch fans, like, at the launch of the Switch, were like, wouldn't it be cool if this game was on Switch? I think the Switch is capable of playing this game. And uh, sure enough, they showed it off. That's what they led the Direct with. Very exciting. We've been big Overwatch fans in the past. But that's part of the problem for me is my excitement around Overwatch as a game has greatly reduced in the last year, year and a half, just because I haven't been motivated to boot up my PlayStation and play it, and I don't necessarily know having it handheld is going to be the thing that's going to bring me back to the fold on this. Um, they did show off in the trailer that it looks like they're adding uh, motion aiming, which actually is really nice. I know that there's a lot of shooter fans or gaming fans like, oh, motion aiming, so stupid, they hate it. I like it because I have poor control over my thumbs. I'm bad at shooters. So just being able to tweak my hands back and forth a little bit to refine the shot is actually a way I like playing shooters a lot. I really enjoyed Splatoon, and I, I always play Doom on Switch with the motion controls, and I actually find that the best way for me to play Doom. That's why when Doom Eternal comes out and I want to pick it up, it's going to be for the Switch. So that was a big thing to see, see Overwatch finally have come into Switch. And uh, I believe what we saw is it's going to be a, a game available for download. I don't know if there's going to be a physical cartridge of this one released. Um, right. And it's going to be a $40 download, and that's going to give you some, some skins and loot crates as well. So all things considered that it's not launching at a $60 price. Oh, that shows a physical edition. Maybe there's a physical edition. But um, $40 is what I was, what I was hearing. I, I haven't done a ton of research behind that to know if that's true. But if that is the price point, to me, that actually is pretty. It's pretty good, um, and I mean, there'll be plenty of people that are going to pick this up because because they Overwatch is still very well, very healthy. But you're right as far as this game kind of right now. I'm not into Overwatch, and so they've lost their opportunity with me at least and you. Like you were saying, I don't know. I I guess once I see it like on somebody's Switch, and once I like. See how it plays and and really the online you know functionality mm -hmm. of it because what I mean that's what this game is is online competition. So I guess local land look the way that the the switch is so yeah. popular for local party that could be cool if enough people have it. But um, you know it, yeah it not being a sixty dollar game is is a plus, um, especially coming out of Blizzard and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. With the switch tax, you we were worried about it um, because they were doing the whole like special edition version where you're getting all the extra content. So like I'm like, oh, they're building this up to be a sixty dollar uh, launch. So forty bucks is cool, and on the switch is good. I wish it would happen a little bit sooner, um, you know. And but it doesn't mean I won't pick it up. It, yeah. it probably be those one one of those things. Though, like let's think about this around the holiday season, Overwatch going on sale. Dropping it down to thirty or maybe maybe slightly below thirty, and I might I, I could might, see that I might snag it at that point. You know what would what would change this from a probably won't buy unless a good deal came across to would really be interested in is if they were to add uh, local wireless cooperative modes mm -hmm. where you didn't need a full roster of what is it uh, is it ten or twelve people play Overwatch. Um, it regardless, is 10? but like maybe just 12. Re regardless, uh, to been a while, yeah, it's been a while for us to play Overwatch, but regardless, if there was offline cooperative modes or even offline competitive modes where you could play with uh, two to four people, that would actually be really appealing. Uh, just because we we love the the local wireless aspect of even like Rocket League, where even if we don't have a Wi-Fi connection, we can queue up against bots, we can queue up against each other. Right. Like so, having modes like that in Overwatch would make it more appealing to me. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Uh, all right, all right. Up next, another big one that I think was uh, sort of leaked. Uh, we we find out who our next fighter coming to Super Smash Brothers. Is. It is Terry from Fatal Fury which didn't move the needle for me in the slightest bit, but um, I've never got real into SNK uh, fighting games. I've never been into Fatal Fury or King of Fighters or, you know, I haven't deviated too far from Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. Um, I, I know, Miggy, you you have some thoughts, right? You you were excited. Oh, yeah, yeah. Terry was one of my mains, and I'm thinking of uh, King of Fighters. Pretty nice addition uh, with Ken and Ryu on there. Definitely excited. 
Yeah, I mean, I played King of Fighters back in the day. I'm familiar with the character. Like, I, it, it just, for me, it's not, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm also not a big Smash, like, player. Like, I, I enjoy it from time to time with, with, like, a group of people. But, so I'm sure, there, like, there are people out there that are way more excited than me, similar, like like uh, Xander from The Legend of Retro. Um, but for me, it was just, it was okay. Like, cool. I'm glad you're getting more fighters. Like, if you asked me who would you rather have, I don't have an answer for you. I don't know who I would rather have. The people that I want to use are already in the game. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Uh, they did also say that after the Direct, they were going to show off some, some Banjo-Kazooie action. And I believe that Banjo also came out last week after the next day. I thought it was the same day. Same day, yeah. So, yeah. so Banjo's out. If you've been out of the Smash Brothers loop and you bought the, the fight pass there, uh, it's a good reason to get back into Smash Brothers. Now, the next piece of news we're going to talk about, which to me was the biggest of the Direct, and that was the fact that the, the longstanding rumors oh. were true, and they yes. have added... Super Nintendo to Nintendo Online. So just like we have the assortment of, you know, 30 or so NES games available for us on the Nintendo Switch, we now have a library of 20 Super Nintendo games that, uh, you know, they, they launched the next day around 7 p.m. We were able to log in, go to the Nintendo uh, Online section and download the pack of games and they're available for us. And I want to take a minute, Grim, and, and talk about the actual games that are in this collection and just, you know, talk about, how, you know, if we're excited, if we think we're going to play or not play some of these. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. First, first up, Brawl Brothers. So you just played this one. <laughs> I just played and it at, think, at lunch break today. Yeah, I think the reaction was, I don't know what this game is. And then you were like, okay, never going to play that again. Yeah, you know, they threw a few curveballs, games you wouldn't necessarily expect to have on here. And Brawl Brothers was one that I knew nothing about. And I queued it up and started playing. I was like, okay, it's a beat em up. And I was like, I don't like the way this controls. I don't like the way this game feels. I'm never going to play this game again. So Brawl Brothers uh, was was a miss there, but at least it has a little bit of variety because it's the only uh, beat em up in the collection. Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I guess for me, the beat em ups, like we just had the Capcom collection come out on the eShop where you got like five or four or five beat em ups in, in, the, in the collection. We've had um, plenty of indie, indie companies releasing these, uh, you know, Retro inspired uh, beat em ups. I'm gonna play Coffee Crisis if I want to play a beat em up. Right, you know? and so like it's it's all fine and dandy, but um, I'm okay that that the at least the initial launch of Super Nintendo games are not brawl um, heavy yeah. when it comes to when it comes to our selections here. Up next, and I I could I could be wrong. I'm quickly skimming this over. The only traditional RPG of the bunch, Breath of Fire. Uh, is mm -hmm. available. It's yep. it's not a game I'm probably ever going to play. I'm at least more likely to maybe mess with Breath of Breath of Fire than I would a Final Fantasy or something like that. But you know, this is one that I I, I think it was a great addition to the collection, even if it didn't play uh, appeal to my sensibilities as a game. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a Breath of Fire super fan or anything. Well, um, Craig WK just did a playthrough on YouTube, yeah. so you know, if, if it's one of those things, I'm not a JRPG player. But if Craig WK liked it, it's probably at least a good game for people that like JRPG. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's true. And again, the fact that you're getting this as, as just a, a Nintendo Online member and it's just adding it to your Switch, that's great because uh, I believe Craig... I mean, not, I, not believe. In order for Craig to stream this and, and, and play it, uh, you know, it was through the SNES Classic. Mm -hmm. Now he'll be able to play it right on the Switch, you know, dock it and stream it or just on the go. Another quick one to sort of go over Demon Crest, which is a, a sequel to Demon's Quest, which is a spinoff from uh, Ghost and Goblins. So uh, this was another one that was kind of a cool addition to the lineup. Uh, I tried playing it a little bit. I didn't like the initial first level of the game. I was like, oh, this is kind of hard and weird, but it's at least a game that for a long time I've wanted to play. So the fact that it's on here does have me a little excited because this is what I will kind of dabble with and hop in and out of, which is what the any SNES Online is good for. Yeah, I don't know a lot about this game, but that is one of the ones that uh, interests me in, in 
because it's an unknown game, it's it's new to me, right? Like yeah. it's almost like a new game. Yeah. Uh, one that's a, a no brainer to have on the list: F Zero. Yep. Yep. Solid. Don't don't need to talk about it a lot. It's it was a. Uh, well, it wasn't a launch title. It was like a week after launch for Super Nintendo. At first, uh, you know, used the Mode 7 for racing. It was, I don't know, man. F-Zero is great. So if you've That's, never played it before, this is a great time to give it a try. Yeah, F-Zero is a lot of fun. Futuristic racing. Uh, Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics. I've never played Joe and Mac. The fact that this was on here, I was like, yes, Joe and Mac is the type of game that I want to play some of. I'm excited that that was on here. Um, I don't have any more to say about that. Joe Mac, it's a yeah, it's a good series. I've had fun with it, and another one I'm happy to see on already what is a strong list of games. All right, here's the game that I've already put the most time into: Kirby's Dream Course. Yeah, you're a Kirby person. I'm so. I'm a Kirby guy. I never really played Dream Course, but I I like mini golf games. It's sort of like a guilty pleasure of mine, and I knew that my wife would actually like it. We we fired up, played it two player. Uh, and as soon as she got the hang of it and realized that she was better than me, at, uh, she was having a great time with it. So we we put a couple hours into Kirby's Dream Course the first night that the uh, SNES Online launched. And I I would guess if I look down this list, that might be the game I ended up putting the most time into because her and I really did have a lot of fun playing. Yeah, I haven't played this one a ton yet, but I mean I'm familiar with Kirby's Dream Course. It's so fun. Um, yeah, I know I know it's um it's got some. Again, you're right. It's a super fun game, so I'm sure it'll get some play time for, for on my Switch when I'm just looking to kind of goof around and, and, and play some, like you said, mini golf. Uh, up next, Kirby's Dream Land 3, uh, which is the popular, like, hand-drawn art style Kirby. Uh, you know, the last time I played Dream Land 3, I wasn't super into it. I know a lot of Kirby fans would have rather had uh, Kirby Superstars as the Super Nintendo effort here from them. Superstars would give them multiple games, right? That's the it's one package. It's 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 like four smaller Kirby games mm-hmm. yeah. uh, that are really high quality opposed to a big full adventure. Gotcha. But it's not it's not like Mario All Stars that was a collab. Yeah. I think I have the name of it. I think it was Kirby Superstars. Um Pilot Wings. Uh I get it. It was Meh. a launch title for the system, but Meh. man, do I never want to play Pilot Wings, so that one could have been <laughs> left off. Uh, okay, up, up next, Star Fox. I get why it was on there, but I mean, I never want to play the original Star Fox. It hurts my eyes, the polygons. Yeah, you know, we talk about a game that that hasn't aged well um, versus others on the SNES. I don't know. I mean, it's one of those games every once in a while I might fire up just to run like one level and then leave. Like, yeah. I'm not interested in playing through that game. Yeah. Uh, up next is another another game that sh- that used the uh, the special a- a- FX chip that was built into Super Nintendo cartridges that were able to make Star Fox run. Uh, Stunt Racer FX, which uh, according to the direct, this is the first time this game has been released since the Super Nintendo. It was never re-released in any other format. Uh, I- I'm really interested to see how this game plays. I haven't played it yet, but like racing games, it looks kind of like a fun cartoony racing game. So if I fire this up and it the mechanics of it are playable in 2019. I'm probably going to put some time in it and have some fun with it. It looks fun. I, again, I don't have uh, hands-on experience with this game in the past. And overall, I think it's, um, you know, as far as the screenshots and the video that I've watched, it looks like a lot of fun. So, yeah, I, I look forward to uh, giving that one a try. Here's another one I know nothing about. Super EDF Earth Defense Force. You don't know anything about Super EDF Earth Defense Force? Well, I'm stupid, and I didn't own a SNES as a child. Well, if it's anything, I mean, Earth Earth Defense Force, I think, is a series that's had games released since this, but I don't, I honestly, I don't know the Super Nintendo edition of this, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's a side-scrolling shooter, so yeah, it, it looks fun. I mean, I'm a fan of that side-scrolling shooting game, but, um, you know, maybe I'm, I'm completely wrong what... Um, what I thought Earth Defense Force was, because that's definitely not the game style I was expecting. Oh, you mean you don't know? Looks cool though. I'm a fan of I'm, I'm a fan of the uh, you know, <laughs> so, the either the top down or side scrolling shooters like R Type and I'm more of a I, top down guy. I Karuga, you know things like that. So um, Earth Defense Force uh, definitely uh, there, check you out. There's something about the top down. My brain works better at maneuvering around the bullets. I'm not as good at the side. I agree, actually, yes, but I do enjoy both. 
Up next, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It's hard. It makes sense that it's on here. It's a good game if you like uh, being repeatedly kicked in the groin by a video <laughs> game. Uh, so I, I'm I'm glad it's on here. It's interesting. So you have that and Demon's Crest, two games that, you know, have a relationship to one another. So I'm not surprised, but I'm also not going to play it a lot because it's really hard. Yeah, I've I've played plenty of this game. It is extremely hard, and um, I don't know. I mean, it's on. I get why it's on the list. So I, I guess that's where I'm at with it. it. It's a good game. I'm sure there's people that like it, but not uh, not one I'm going to be putting a lot of time into. All right, now we're moving into a couple of the heavy hitters. Super Mario Kart yep. available. That's a no-brainer. If that wasn't in this lineup, it would have been surprising. Right. Uh, fired it up for a little bit because my wife's like, oh, I've never played the original Mario. Okay, mm. let's play it. She's like, oh, this makes me dizzy and sick. We need to stop playing it now. Now, that it didn't affect <laughs> me like that, but I could see the way the whole world sort of rotates when you're driving. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's, it's rough to play. It's not like going back to play Mario Kart 64. It still feels about the same. Right. I think our brains made uh, super, uh, the original Super Mario Kart a little bit better than it actually was. <laughs> uh, super Mario World, again, a no-brainer. Oh, absolutely. One of the greatest games of all time yep. uh, available. So, I mean, we don't need to talk about that any further. Uh this is a surprising... I didn't think this would have been the launch title. I thought this would have been something that got added later. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Yeah, so having the uh, sequel to Super Mario World also as a launch title, I feel like you didn't have to do that. You could have saved it for that next wave and just spread it out, but they decided to just give you a bunch of Mario in, in this. Um, Some stupid game called Super Metroid's on Happy there. Happy Metroid <laughs> Monday! Yeah! Yes. Super Metroid on my Switch. Thank you, Nintendo. You sons of bitches. You giving me just breadcrumbs. You're giving me crumbs right now. I'm waiting for my Prime trilogy. I'm waiting for anything else involving Samus. But at least you gave me Super Metroid, which just happens to be my all-time favorite game. Um, I've already started playing it on the Switch. It feels pretty good. I don't like the button layout that they decided to go with as far as it. So I had it like I, by default, I had to adjust it a bit. And again, this is that game that I would really, really like a Switch Lite for. Yeah. Um, because like I tried to play it the other day, didn't have my 8-bit do controller, started to try to use the directional buttons on the Joy-Con and really got frustrated. So um, yeah, but Super Metroid, so happy. So happy it's on the Switch. This is uh, top top two games I was the most excited to see in this collection just because I own Super Metroid on the Wii Virtual Console, and then I also have a ROM of it on my hacked Vita. So now I can play an honest version because I've maybe put two or three hours into Super Metroid. It was just a game I never put a ton of time into. Yeah. Despite being a big fan of Metroid and the series, it was just, you know, I just didn't have good access to it at, at different times in my life. So uh, this is now officially factored into my, hey, I really shouldn't buy video games because I have uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G game I should be playing. Uh, the fact that I now have Super Metroid on my Switch is now factored into that. I think as soon as I finish Symphony of the Night on the Vita, going straight into a full playthrough of Super Metroid. Very exciting. Um, Super Poyo Poyo 2 which when we first saw it, we thought was going to be Kirby's Avalanche they were giving us. This is the one Japanese import we're getting in our North American release of these games. Um, dude, it's cool to have Poyo Poyo. What a great what a great multiplayer game to throw at us in this collection. You know, Poyo Poyo trying to gain some more popularity when they mixed it in with Tetris and everything here recently on some of the on the game they released for the Switch. And now trying to get a little bit more of just straight Poyo Poyo. Um into the North American um, community is good because I think it's it's a solid puzzle game that definitely could um, benefit from getting some of these titles over here and letting people um, en enjoy them. Uh, Poyo Poyo 99. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we're just going to hit the next two real fast. Super Soccer and Super Tennis. Whew. Sure. Top. I, I, I get it. You had to add some obligatory uh, sports games in there. Um, We're super. Is super, super soccer any good? I don't even. I'm, yeah. Tennis video games that aren't Mario Tennis just aren't fun. So I don't even yeah. care. 
Yeah, these two are surprising. I feel like these are just solid, or not solid. These are just straight fillers that could have been, you could have replaced them with almost anything and they would have been a better choice. I mean, I'm, I don't get it at all. I'm not a, not, these two are just kind of a waste for me. Yeah. And last but not least, Legend of Zelda, the link to the past, link to a past, a link to the past. I'm having a brain fart and can't read. Um, this is the other one right up there with Super Metro. I'm just super excited to have. I played a lot of this game as a child. I started a run of it uh, before I bought my 3DS. I was playing my Game Boy Advance copy on my Retron 5, and I got like 70% of the way through the game. It's just I never fully played through this game, and it is one of my childhood favorites just because um, my uncle had it. And I, whenever I was at my grandparents' house, I'd be able to play it. So I'm just excited to now have this game available for me. I want it. It's almost as excited as I would have been to buy it if the virtual console. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a good one um, that I've played in the past and, you know, definitely would uh, love to do another run through of it. And the fact that it's, again, on my portable system is a great, a great thing. This adds a lot of value to the Nintendo uh, online service. It was nice getting those NES games, but I often found myself going, okay. It was fun playing Punch Out. It was fun playing Excite Bike, but there were a lot of them that I wasn't going back to outside the Mario yeah. games and stuff. A lot of it's like, oh, this is fun for a couple minutes. That's what but it is. Yeah. These games have some meat to them. Yep. And then you got more of that in the 16 bit era. We were kind of spoiled by that. The, some of these are games that, you know, I, I know that, hey, I could put 12 hours into this video game. Like, there's, there's a worthy reason to invest and get excited to have these. Um, Nintendo did come out and announce that uh, not. Completely like the NES controllers that actually lock to the side of the system, they are releasing Super Nin official Nintendo Switch Super Nintendo controllers that will sync up and play. Uh, it was kind of one of those things I was like, well, this is cool, but I have two 8-bit dues already. It would be nice to have these because I'm sure they sync up a little bit easier than the 8-bit do. Probably. But again, I already own two 8-bit dues, so I don't think I'll be buying these. Yeah, I mean, the other problem, too, is that... Did I I don't know if they disclose prices. Thirty dollars a piece. Yeah, see, that's the same thing. They're they're up. Well, I guess thirty dollars a piece. It's six. It's sixty bucks again uh, for two controllers. If you need, if you want to pick up two, because I believe the Nintendo ones actually sold in a double pack. You didn't have a choice. Correct. So if these are thirty dollars a piece and you can actually just buy one, maybe that's not as bad. And and maybe it is something that I would uh, be interested in. But overall, um, cool. Nothing that's like gonna move the meter for me like like the games did you know what i thought about about those nes controllers how collectible is 15 yeah probably they probably sold like none of those yeah exactly because not probably... not only did you have to be nintendo online in order to even get the ability to buy them you had to order them and then you had to order them so like they weren't the easiest thing to get a hold of which means again as time goes on there's not going to be a ton of them out there yeah. so and that's a lot of times where your uh, valuable items come along so my first thing that I got. Oh, oh, one more fact before we go into things. Nintendo has come out and stated that monthly additions to the NES and the Super Nintendo Online are no more. They are now going to add things whenever. They didn't. They didn't give us a window. They're just kind of like, yeah, <laughs> regular updates to these platforms will end. They are working on adding more games to both platforms, but we will not you know, every month receive two new games. And that's actually really upsetting to me because that feels like Nintendo is, they, the smoke and mirrors like, hey, here's this flashy new set of games. They are no longer going to give them to you regularly. It's like they're on there. We're paying for a service and they're like, yeah, but we're not really going to commit to taking care of you of the fans. Like to me, I was pretty upset. Um, and, and who knows? Maybe I'm falsely upset and we'll get... Get, you know, games uh, regular, but not exactly once per month. And maybe we'll get more games. Maybe, you know, every three months, they'll add 10 games. And I'll go, okay, this is plenty of games, but probably not. I don't know. It's tough because when you take the ex expectation away of getting your games every month and that, to the point of, like, you're just going to get them whenever we're ready to give them to you, it creates that, like, like how are we going to, like, 
how do we know there's no accountability there's no accountability and there's no like what's the notification now like before you could just say this month you're getting this next month you're getting that right now it's like randomly you're just gonna get what hit with an email or or get a notification on your switch that says new games available and you're gonna be like oh boy and you're gonna go in and they're gonna be a bunch of trash or whatever i don't like why they wanted to change this like i, I wish and this is, you know, companies not being very direct or, or just upfront and honest with their customers. It's like, why did you change this? Why, what made you change your business model before I had to renew my, my Nintendo Online? Like, ever. You know, like, here, I'm still running my first initial subscription of Nintendo Online, and you're already changing your policy. You know, so... As far as I'm concerned, when we look at years upon years of of Xbox Live Gold and PS Plus and just monthly releases, like that is the standard. That's what we're used to. That's what we want. We get excited right around the end of the month, beginning of next month to see what Sony and Microsoft are going to give us. And now you're just going to wing it and be like, yeah, we'll give you something when we give you something. That's kind of, and if that's not it's so Nintendo, yeah, it's so Nintendo and it, and it may not even be what you actually are planning to do, but it's, but because of your piss poor delivery and explanation, um, that's, we're sitting here thinking that, and mm. that's, uh, it's unfortunate. Yep. And, uh, I don't know. There's, there's one glaring omission on this list of games and I'm curious to know if there's a game on here that you're very disappointed isn't on there. So um, I'm just upset that I, I have no idea when I'm going to get Donkey Kong Country. I knew, That's, it's yeah, my it's I my it. my favorite Super Nintendo game. Um, you know, almost as inf- almost as frequently as you proclaim your love for Super Metroid, I'm here talking about how the Donkey Kong Country series is my favorite line of games from the Super Nintendo. So uh, when the list came out and I'm looking and looking and looking, like part of, like my heart dropped. I was like, oh man. It left my game out. Is there one game for you uh, that you're like, oh, it's kind of a bummer that's not there? I mean, we got the uh, Brawl Brothers. Mm. I would have much much rather enjoyed a Turtles in Time. Yeah. But um, with licensing, you know, like, that's tough with, like, with licensing and stuff. You you're know? Nintendo. Get it done. I know. Like, they should. You know, that's my, and, and so my problem now is that I don't know if and when I'll ever get it. And that's just, like we could sit there and say the same thing about Castlevania Four. We can say the same thing about the Mega Man X series. You know, um, on, on, like you think about rare games like Mega Man Seven, a game that was you know not that's super expensive to get on the Super Nintendo. You know, so this is you're bringing this virtual um, option of Super Nintendo to your platform, but you're 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 just kind of like easing us with it it almost feels like a t because you're like where's chrono trigger where's you know where's earthbound where's you know th- these types of games and i'm not saying i needed them all at lunch but but like now that i know i now that i know in 30 days i'm not gonna you know look at a list and say oh i'm getting castlevania instead i'm just sitting here and just waiting for you to say something it, it just for me like i'm eventually gonna get that point where i just don't care and every once in a while i'll come around and see what you've added like but I'm not gonna. It's not the same. Where end of the month comes around and I go, where's the uh, where's the post about what we're getting for PlayStation? Where's the post about what we're getting for Xbox? You know, like it keeps like Sony and and Microsoft have have trained us to like look into this at a certain time. We're we're you know we're creatures of habit, and so they've done a good job of that. And I just don't understand why Nintendo didn't want to do that, other than the fact that they maybe thought they were giving too many games away and they were worried about running out of good games i don't know like you have a giant library so i can't really imagine that that's like a mindset that you're having but you know it's uh it's tough but yeah i would turtles in time would be would be the one that definitely like clicked in my head right away with with the fact that we got brawl brothers yeah yeah and some of this is going to be tough because you think about uh, getting castlevania 4 well that castlevania collection that anniversary collection is out and i think that's on there I think about all the different ways we can just Mega Man games and the money goes directly to Capcom. You know, like, I, I don't know what the licensing deals they work out for these online games for third party things that aren't already uh, solely owned by Nintendo. So, you know, I don't have a lot of hope for those those really strong third party games ever. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get like your classic NBA jam. Where's your Where's your Mortal Kombat at? 
or Street Fighter. Whereas uh, this was the era where the where I feel like fighting games started to they well not started. This is this is the era where they really kind of gained yeah a lot of their momentum. So I feel like that's something that's missing there. But um, you know, instead we get Super Soccer and Super Tennis. Like yeah. where's Tecmo Super Bowl? Uh, they probably Su- get a lot. Super Tecmo no, Super Bowl. Or I think that one had an NFL license on it, yeah. unlike their original Tecmo Bowl. Yeah. So I mean, it's things like that that they're running into. But um, I don't know. There's so many. One, one to ten. What, what do you consider this initial uh, launch group of games here? One, one to ten scale, and then we'll. we'll... I give it a, an eight. An eight. Yeah. Um. You know, for me, I'm going with a seven. Yeah. It's good. It's strong. I mean, we got plenty of haymakers with Zelda and Mario and Super Metroid. Uh, you know, you got classic characters like Kirby. Um, so, I mean, and it's a good mix, too. So I give it an 8, but I definitely, you know, it gets knocked for the Super Tennis, Super Soccer, and it gets knocked for a couple of the other, like, rando games that I'm like, again, maybe there's, like, a cult following some of these games, but overall they're they're definitely not in the top, uh, you know, Top list and and I guess not everything needs to be top top tier game, but I mean come on, Super Soccer, soft. It's soft. It's those soft. those are games you can go out and buy for literally fifty cents. Yeah, physical. All right, uh, moving on to just some of the other game announcements. Um, before we get into a few of the other big things to to close things out. Um, uh, a highly sought after. Weeb game that Miggy might want to chime in on here, uh, being ported from the Wii U, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, uh, FE Encore, Sharp FE Encore, whatever it is. Um, Miggy, tell me about this glorious anime sensation. I don't even know what to say about the. I watched the trailer, I go, that is appalling to me. Like, it's so far from a video game I would ever play. Uh, but being that you're here and it's not so far off from a game you would play, tell me about it. I know nothing about it. I know it was hot, uh, hot title, I think for the uh, Wii U, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Um, I wanted to play it um, because uh, they said Shin Megami Tensei and I was sold there. But the crossover between that and Fire Emblem, um, yeah, yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll definitely be, can't wait to get this uh, with my. So I bought this on the Wii U. Um, back when like the Wii U was dying, <laughs> like when there was no games. Yeah. Well, yeah, back when the Wii U was dying, I just started picking up games that they were throwing on the clearance shelves, and I was like, "Oh, well, this is uh, this is interesting." And looking, and I remember um, I would put the Wii U by my bed, and then I would just play on the gamepad. Yeah, you know, like Switch style before the Switch. <laughs> and so one day I grabbed this game, and I was like, "I'm gonna throw this in here and see what this is like." And I threw it in, and I'm like, "What?" the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last time i played that game <laughs> you're not weeb enough for this yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i i found my level of uh of, of weeb it wasn't at this level <laughs> so um yeah i i don't know it like the art style and stuff looked really cool and that's what kind of grabbed me but overall i was just like um yep not i'm good i'm good all right, moving moving along. Uh, they announced like, Assassin's Creed uh, Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection uh, coming out in December, and that is a port of uh, Black Fra- Black Flag. You got this. And Assassin's Creed Ro- Creed Rogue. Man, I cannot talk. <laughs> drink I'm gonna, some more beer. I'm drink some more beer. Uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed for the Switch. I'm sure it'll go over just as well as the last Assassin's Creed crap they tried to push the Switch. It's coming out at a forty dollar price tag. Oh, thank you. I'm good. I mean, Black Flag is is a lot of people like it, but like I just, I'm gonna be honest with you. I just don't care about Assassin's Creed anymore. Like they, they literally just burned me out of that franchise. I was into that franchise too. I really liked them, and then it was just like when they just started slinging those games like every six months or whatever. I was like, I can't keep up, and I'm done. I'm I'm not interested anymore. And even though they've really come back with Odyssey and um, Origins, I I just like and Jade's enjoyed both of those. I just don't care. I just can't get back into it. Yeah, they haven't done anything good since Weathered. Wow. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, we sh- got to see a little bit more of Game Freak's uh, town, is, and it's now called uh, Little Town Hero. It's a JRPG that takes place in a town. You battle monsters. It's by Game Freak, which means it's probably super good. Um, and they announced that the music is by the guy who did the music for Undertale or the creator yeah. of Undertale. Yeah. So the music's probably really good. It's coming October 16th, and I want to say it's actually only a $25 price tag is what I heard, which is really affordable for this game. I don't have time in my in my play uh, schedule to play it, but, I mean, Game Freak makes Pokemon, and I love Pokemon, so. So I um I need to see the battle mechanics more because when they showed it off this last direct I was like I was kind of like I don't know how I feel about this and then they started to show like how you're moving around and how very turn based it is and it's like just a tactics turn tactics game. yeah the tactics style really started to be like I was like you know what it's pretty I really like the look of it but um this now that I've seen more of the gameplay and everything, I'm first like when they first announced it, I was like, "Ooh, a new Game Freak game!" Um, I'm I'm excited, but now I'm less excited after this trailer. Honestly, that's, that's fair. And so that's kind of a bummer because again, I like the. Uh, there's so many games where it's like the art style and everything. Really, I'm into it, and then I see the gameplay and I'm like, "Nope." If I buy this game, I'm gonna play it a couple times, and then I'm just gonna stop. You know, a game similar to like Battle Chasers, where when that came out on the Switch, really liked the characters, really liked the world, really liked the concept that was based off of a off of a comic book. Couldn't get into the game. Something I can't do anymore. I used to, and I used to play games like this. I just, just not anymore. I don't know. I've been ruined. All right, keeping it moving, uh, just breezing over a couple quick ports. Bethesda is re-releasing Doom 64 to celebrate Doom's, what, 25th anniversary? I think that's Doom's 25th anniversary. So Doom 64 uh, coming to Switch on November 22nd, adding to the collection of Doom games that are available. So that's cool. Um, Jedi, uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, uh, a game that I didn't like on the original Xbox, is now being ported to the switch so i heard some do- people in the community that actually were excited about this like at first i like laughed because i was like really this is the game you're gonna you're gonna port but um some people really liked this game i just for me was this was not one of the star wars games that uh you know, grabbed my attention i bought it used and you know, played on the original xbox because again i was playing the original xbox in 2009 so well after its life was over and i was playing i was like this isn't fun i just don't like it i just couldn't get into it yeah um Okay, moving into a few of the big things before we close things out. Uh, they, there is a free-to-start or free-to-play Kirby game called Super Kirby Clash. Uh, it's been described sort of as a Monster Hunter-esque Kirby game. It's four-player co-op. You have different powers. You can level up and stuff, and you're just trying to take down a big boss. Um I didn't download it yet. My wife wants to. I, I don't see me putting any time into this unless my wife talks me into yeah, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I, I kind of got turned off by it when they kept making sure that you understood that it was free to start. Yeah. Like, that's the words they use. Free to start. Free to start. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? So, I don't know. It, whatever. If you're a Kirby fan, then yeah, maybe it's something that you'll check out. But overall, it kind of feels like this is a mobile game that probably belonged on the phone. They showed off more Luigi's Mansion 3, uh, and uh, th- there's going to be uh, an eight-player uh, against each other m- arena-style ghost-catching mode. And to me, this seems super cool. It, the Luigi's Mansion 3 continues to be a game that uh, charms me and has me excited to add this to my collection. And you've played it, so. Yeah, so I I've never been... Uh, much of a Luigi's Mansion person, not because I didn't like it, but because I just never really played it. And so, yeah. And so when I got to play the demo at PAX, I was like, this is a, this is really cool. Um, right after PAX is when, you know, the direct dropped and they were like, yeah, 4v4 Luigi versus Gooigi is basically, it, is basically the teams. And um, 
it looks fun because it kind of looks like a Mario Party esque like different things where you're catching ghosts and trying to shoot them through goals. You're playing bumper boats and trying to collect coins. You know, it's just it's just that added mode that I think will be fun, especially if you got uh, you know again local gameplay with several people with switches that all have Luigi's Mansion. Like you're gonna be able to um, have some fun with it. But the game itself felt so good. And uh, actually, kind of turned into probably a uh, a pickup for me, uh, day, for at launch. I'm I'm actually excited for this game. It's every time I go back and put more time into Luigi's Mansion because I have Dark Moon. I never played the original. I got Dark Moon yeah. for my birthday two or three years ago. Uh, my wife just bought me a copy because she just she want. I was getting something else for my birthday that year. She just wanted me to have something to open that day. And I'd mentioned a couple times in the store, and it was like a select twenty dollar at that point. And then so I started playing it then, and I'm like. Wow, this is such a charming and fun game. And she's had a lot of fun playing Dark Moon on the 3DS. And when 3 got announced, I go, I'm interested because I, I've liked what I've experienced before. But between what I've seen over the last couple of weeks from this game, the co-op, the I mean, the multiplayer modes that look super fun, and my wife straight up telling me, uh, we're buying this. It looks like it's a buy for me, too. So I, I'm excited to to play this game. And what they show off at the Direct uh, did what a Direct is supposed to do, and it's sell a video game. Yep, absolutely. Uh, we got uh, a mess load of stuff uh, from Pokemon Sword and Shield. They showed off a, f- a few more minutes um, including a couple Pokemon and, and some of the mechanics in the game, like the, there's going to be some cooking and crafting type mechanics. Um, they showed off sort of the Pokemon camp, which is an area that your Pokemon, it kind of looks like the daycare, something where your Pokemon can level and grow stronger. They show some some of my new stuff, but really I want to talk about what's important when you're seeing things with Pokemon. They showed off two new Pokemon. Yep. Ultigeist, which is a ghost type Pokemon that is a haunted teapot. That is adorable, and it's what I like about Pokemon, because I'm not mad about kind of Pokemon that other people think are kind of stupid, like uh, Trubbish, the garbage Pokemon. I love them. So the fact that this is just a haunted teapot has me excited, because it's uh, silly and adorable, like Pokemon should be. Uh, And then Bramorot is, I believe, uh, Bramorant, that's what it is. Bramorant, which is this bird Pokemon who... Has a special ability that whenever he uses, like, surf, he catches a fish in his mouth and shoots it at uh, his opponent and doing more damage. So it's cool to see that they're adding cool, unique abilities for Pokemon because this this is something that makes this Pokemon interesting and something you'd actually train. Because I'm not going to train some random dumb-looking bird, but now that I know he chokes on fish and spits them at people called a gulp missile, I'm into the bird! So, um... <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it, it's an interesting like addition to the mechanics. I I definitely appreciated it, and I feel like the more that we're sticking around with this game after we after we questioned it initially, it, the more we're starting to feel that poke that special Pokemon like you know feel of the game, and just really uh, starting to get excited for the game again. You know, yeah. and getting again getting hands on at packs, I realized how cool the. Um, uh, What's the, um, what's the gigantic mode called? Gig, again? Gig, uh, Dynamaxing. Dynamaxing, yes, that's it. I was thinking Dynavite, which is yeah. that dog food that yeah, makes was, your dog's coat shiny. And so understanding how it fully works and seeing its limitations and realizing you can strategize around it basically got me back on board, and then everything that we've been seeing after that is just building on this. So, yeah, uh, both cool Pokemon. I knew you'd be into both of them, but I, I figured, you know, uh, you're a ghost Pokemon fan, so I knew the the teapot one would be a, a big win for you. I like there there are two categories of good ghost Pokemon. Pookie, adorable. Yeah, that there one's adorable. Yeah. Like lit like Litwick. Adorable. And you can drink the tea. Ooh, as long as I get haunted, I'm in. Um, up next, uh, t- two more big things I want to hit on again. We're not covering everything, so just watch the direct if you if you want more than just our opinions on the highlights. Uh, but we they showed off uh, a big waste of uh, evening being shown a ton of crap about Animal Crossing that doesn't look fun at all. Yeah, well, you're not an Animal Crossing guy. I'm just saying this game doesn't look fun at all. Have you ever gone fishing or bug catching in real life? In real life? Yeah. No, you can do it in Animal Crossing now and you don't have to worry about getting sweaty. I'm not going to lie. I, I When I started playing Stardew Valley, I was like, oh, maybe like a game like Animal Crossing could win me over. And then I watched like... Th- Five minutes of the stuff from this new game and go no this looks dumb and i don't want to play it 
I think a lot of games like Stardew Valley pulled a lot from um, Animal Crossing. Yeah, no doubt. And so the problem with Animal Crossing is that though you still have a fan base that's very excited to do the, to work with these things with this and and play this game. I almost wonder if like because of these games like Stardew Valley are out there, that Animal Crossing just doesn't. It can't. It's not as special as it used to be. Like when I, I can't even watch this idiot run around like Naruto with his arms behind him. I'm not going to be able to play the game because the running animation <laughs> is awful. I cannot play this video game. <laughs> yeah, but can you make a, a flimsy axe? It didn't look like a flimsy axe. Listen, I want you talking about my flimsy axe on this show. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is kid, kid friendly. My bad. This is the game zone for the children. Look at it. It's just like Minecraft. You can build. You can build. Wooden... I don't play Minecraft. Yeah, but this is. But and to be fair, I, haven't, I only played five hours of Stardew Valley before my Switch was taken away from That's me. That's true. You haven't. Yeah, you haven't really had much Switch. My time. wife's played a hundred hours of Stardew Valley. Look at this guy's about to burn the whole forest down with a fire. I mean, like this is really up here what a boring looking island they're on. It does. Yeah. It, I don't, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you can sit there by a fire and, and look stupid. I understand some people are excited for this fall. game. It just looks it looks so boring to me. Yeah. I um I really enjoyed Animal Crossing in the early years when like GameCube, you know? Yeah. Um it was it was a fun game. I just to now I now I look at it and I feel like it just hasn't evolved enough. And and I just for me, like it's not grabbing me. I don't think I'm going to buy it. I know there are people out there that are super pumped, like again, like Xander from Legend of Retro, who's who's a big Animal Crossing fan. And there's just people that love Animal Crossing. I will say the fishing has always been fun, but I don't know. I just it's, it's not. I think I'm on board with you. It's not doing it for me. And and again, I know you know because there might be people listening that are like, oh. Dead Eye's just an angry idiot. Like, what does he know? I understand that different people like different types of video games. There's people that would see Jurassic World Evolution, a game that I love and sunk a ton of time into and uh, think is great. There's people who go, that's super boring. You're just making dinosaurs and looking at them inside cages. Yeah, so I, I understand. But for me, this game looks like a big old hot fart. And I... <laughs> Don't want any more Nintendo Direct or E3 time wasted on showing me anything else. Oh, I guess it'll be out before E3 next year. Yeah, I, I wish true. the game was already Hopefully. out so I could stop having trailer time wasted on it. It just doesn't look fun. So for people that are excited for this game, I hope you liked your trailer. Hope you enjoy your sad life. Um, <laughs> wow. Anything else? Lastly. The, the Nintendo always leaves you with a, but wait, there's more. Yeah. And uh, what we got is a game that it'll get a lot, of, uh, a small group of people extremely excited. And I'm not in that small group of people. They announced that uh, we are getting Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition in 2020. So it is a, a HD version of the original Xenoblade, which was sort of a cult hit on the original Wii didn't sell very many copies at all in the U.S., uh, but Xenoblade is now a series that we've seen other releases and and other games do successful uh, sell successfully for Nintendo because Xenoblade this game was ported to the new 3DS when it came out. We've seen Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U, and then now Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and a DLC that's its own full game. Um, for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch. So I think there's a lot of people that have never had an opportunity to play the first game that are going to be excited to go back and play it. Just not an Ethan game, Deadite game, and I'm I'm not going to play it. But but I'm I'm excited for people because I know some people are like, oh, cool, I can finally. Yeah, um, I'm there with you. I like I play, I tried to play it. On um, the 3DS is when I picked yeah, it up. Yeah, I remember the you. New I 3DS. almost did just because yeah. I was excited to try something that was a new 3DS game. And I will I will play, R I did used to play RPGs handheld on the DS when I had more time in my life. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I mean, it was uh, it was fine. Like, I, I thought it was interesting, but it was another one of those things where I just didn't uh, give it a lot of time and, and it quickly faded away. So, yeah, I don't think I'll uh, be trying it again. I think uh, we're... We've we've uh, gone down that road. And it's not for me. Cleaning cloth. 
Yeah, I'm impressed doing that. Easy person. But uh, again, there was more to this Nintendo Direct, more indie games and, and other titles shown off. Uh, these were just the big points that we wanted to hit and talking points. And again, we spent a lot of time on today's show talking about this. So um, again, if you want to talk about more, uh, we do, of course, have a Nintendo channel in the Games of the Media Discord. Uh, feel free to go there and ridicule me for just taking a big giant dump on Animal Crossing despite not having <laughs> spent a single second of my life playing that game. So you can come call me an idiot and uh, we'll talk about it. All right. Well, I recommend a good therapist to you to tell you how you can spend your time more. Effect. We do have uh, real quick. Let's just touch base on a couple other pieces of Nintendo news is that they did also announce the uh, fitness uh, oh, yeah. thing that like the it's a weird like it is super circle. weird looking and you just like, you know, shake weight it and do all sorts of weird things with it and. I believe you saw like some of the video where you were like, um, I would never do this in front of my family. <laughs> right. There's one where there's a dad on his back. Uh, Miggy, I don't know if you can go towards Thrusting the end of this the ad uh, a little bit further. There's the one where the dads, uh, it's, uh, well, they're in Texas. Yeah, in Dallas. Stop there. Stop there. Okay, you see this kid losing its mind about this game, but then you see like the dad on the ground just thrusting his hips upward. And I'm like, yeah, no thanks. Do I ever want to see my father doing that <laughs> while I'm playing video games? Uh, hey, you know what? We, we Fit was insanely successful for Nintendo. I own a Wii Fit board. I've played Wii Fit. I'm really interested to see what these games are going to be like because I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not going to buy this, like a little casual exercise game that, that I can play on the Switch. Uh, because again, I own a Wii Fit, so I can't sit here and tell you I wouldn't. I bought Just Dance, so my wife and I would get a little bit more active. So I can't. The, I, fitness games make sense to a certain degree, but this looks insane. The, these people are having way too much fun, and it. Look at the guy. Look at these people. If you're not watching the live stream, you're seriously missing out. <laughs> these people, oh man, uh, what do you think about it, Grim? You know, it's really weird, but if anyone's going to pull off something like this, it's going to be Nintendo. I think <laughs> that's yeah, the best the, one. The, it's, like, it's like this ring, again, with the Joy-Con, and she's just jamming it back and forth. <laughs> and like, but she's real happy. Yeah, everyone's having the best time of their life. I'm just waiting for the things to fail and break and snap and, like, shatter into people's faces. Like, like I, I'm curious. Like, it's hopefully a metal band, but there seems to be some plastic on this thing. That I feel like... Again, people that are being that aggressive with it is just gonna break and like cause eye injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, overall, I mean, it's not a Wii Fit board. I don't think it's you know it's not as um, when I guess marketing wise, when I look at this, I'm not as like intrigued by it as I am when the Wii Fit board came out because it was just this weird thing that like I bought, I put on the ground, and I did all the stuff with. Here it's like this strange oval, and then like now I'm strapping a Joy-Con to high up on my on my thigh. I'll strap and, it on for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And so like I'm just kind of looking at this and I'm like, hey, it's cool, but um, you know, overall, like I, I don't I don't want to say hey, it's cool. Hey, it's weird, and I just don't know if it's gonna work. Like I look at this, and I go, this is. Look at that yeah, idiot. that guy. Yeah. Just kicking his life. But that like, with his whole family cheering him up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh god i'm dying i don't know it Ugh. to me just seems like um i don't know how well the um labo did but this seems dumber dumber than the labo yeah no doubt but th so, dude, this I don't is, know. dude nintendo's gonna make millions of dollars the kicker the kicker is is that they will make money off it especially considering if they um if they like ship people's believe or or are proved that it actually is a good workout and then it actually can be this fun interact because mm -hmm. that's the thing the second you can make it interactive and you can make it a game people will buy it yeah. uh, absolutely because i hate getting on a treadmill or whatever and running for a half hour an hour in a gym but the second that you can turn it into like a game to me i'm way more interested in doing it so that's the kicker if they if they can catch that magic again like they did with the Wii Fit board, then yeah, it's going to be a big success. But either way, it's really freaking weird. I was about to make hella money on it. Yeah. So that leads me to the last piece of Nintendo news that I wanted to talk about, and that is that they filed a new patent for what looks like um, a 
hinged Joy-Con. And so basically how the reason why I wanted to bring this up is that I looked at the uh, patent and I go, you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense because so many times, especially on the airplane on my flight home, I hold the Joy-Con or I hold the, the switch in a way where I, it, I actually fatigue from it. Like where my, my arms or whatever, I'm like, I don't really want to hold it this way. But if I tilt it down or whatever, I'm not really getting the screen the way I want it to be facing me. And so I, I kind of noticed, I was like, huh, you know, this thing, and, and again, this is why the light intrigues me because it's smaller, but I kind of noticed like long term when I'm a like, four hour flight home, just holding this switch in one spot where the hinged um, joy cons would allow me to keep the screen facing me, but it would allow me to change my grip that I have, which is really what I wanted. I wanted my, I wanted a more of like a straight wrist where I was, I was angling my wrist, you know, to on the airplane and you're limited in space in the airplane and, and stuff like that. So it wasn't like I was going to pull a tray out and throw it in tripod mode and pull the joy cons off and be more comfortable. But these intrigued me. Cause I go, this actually is the exact thing that I was kind of complaining about on the airplane where I could, I could, change the uh the grip uh hold on on the switch itself uh it's a smart idea it doesn't mean it's ever going to come out but they did file a patent about it and it would evolve the joy con once again and you also kind of wonder what like their only idea of this joy con is not, can't be just simply being able to tilt the controller a little bit like you know they probably have other reasons why hey if we did this we could also do these 20 different things with the joy con oh i mean it fits into the fitness ring a little bit better when it's got that right, hook on yeah, it yeah. yeah so you're gonna it wraps, straight it wraps around your, your it wraps around your thigh just a little bit better instead of just being it's, a straight will, piece yeah. of plastic yeah you know uh you know if i were to get married again you know i would have you know would have had l wear a garter that was a you know a bent joy con right yeah around yeah. on the yeah. thigh Ooh. exactly Talking about spicing things up. Anyways, it's interesting. Uh, adding a hinge to a controller, though, does lead the big question of durability and, and just overall other issues that it could cause as far as just a flex point in a controller. Does it start to get sloppy? And, and how, how are they going to keep it? For, like, how does it lock if, if you can make it uh, a straight Joy-Con? You know, there's a lot of questions around it still that I, I wonder, but it, to me... Still an interesting idea. The other question, same with, and that kind of like, I had this idea with the light the other night is because of these Joy Cons, do you need a different case? You know, is, your, is the cases they're kind of make right now, are they going to support these Joy Cons? The Joy Con, and, uh, you know, just like the light, the light's small enough where you're going to have, it's, you know, Nintendo's done, did this on purpose, is that you're going to have to buy a whole new set of accessories for it, really. You're not going to want this little thing sliding around in your big switch case. So, yeah, I, you know, that's another interesting piece of it is how it's going to change dynamic of uh, some of your accessories. For sure. But we'll see. A lot of Nintendo news. So, again, get into our uh, Discord and go to the Nintendo channel and uh, chat with us about it. And, uh, you know, we are... Uh, Ooh, we're really cruising over an hour into this show. So I think it's going to be a two news topic show today. Two news topics. So do we want to talk about Gears of War, Gears 5, yes. or do we want to talk about Cyberpunk 2077? I think we should talk about Gears because... Gears you know, is in the here and now. We can yeah, always, we, yeah. Cyber, Cyberpunk's going to be a conversation we have for a long time, and uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk about some Cyberpunk uh, next week on the pre-show if... Okay. The, the news, the new, because the news is kind of well. Basically, they are, we'll just spoil it. They're working on multiplayer for Cyberpunk. Yeah, and I think for me, I just kind of wanted to cover, and maybe, maybe we'll cover in a pre-show, or maybe I'll do like a vlog. Yeah, you know, Miggy has been trying to talk me into doing vlogging now since he wants he wants more work. He he wants more video work on his hands. He wants me to run run him ragged. Um, so <laughs> what um what I was gonna say about multiplayer is simply. Does it, does it need it? And we're going to have to leave it at that yeah. and talk about that later. I'd love to hear I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But I have plenty to talk about Gears 5 because we have been playing it. We did get the early access because of the Game Pass Ultimate. And, you know, the really the focus point here isn't there's not going to be any spoilers, so don't worry about that. 
I wanted to talk about a AAA game of Gears 5 and the ridiculous, troublesome launch we have had uh, with, with, the, um, with, with this game. And just from complete server crashes to buggy, buggy story mode to corruptions on, on some of the story file, you know, on the files to just complete, just an utter booting of players randomly throughout all sorts of different pieces. And so for, for this to be a Gears game, you know, your second largest franchise, arguably next to Halo or Microsoft, it's been a pretty disappointing launch. And I know you can sit there and say, well, they don't technically come out till the 10th. So hopefully by then it's all fixed. But you have a lot of people. You you pushed Xbox Game Pass Ultimate really hard. And so you have a ton of people that have ad adopted to it. And um you know, this nothing but a it's been nothing but a disappointment because here I am and it's my you know my birthday weekend, everything's going on, and so I um you know I Basically, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for my new Gears 5 Xbox One X to show. Didn't need it. Already had a Scorpio, Project Scorpio, but I wanted this one because it's Gears. I have the Gears uh, 4 Xbox One S. I am a Gears fan. If, if this is their second biggest franchise, if this is my biggest franchise for Microsoft, then, then Halo. And so I'm very excited. I get the game. I get the system. Uh, I, I had picked up a second one for my buddy. And he came over, picked it up. We were both, you know, he runs home. I get, I get on um, Facebook Live and unbox it for everybody to see. And it's really cool. It looks, it looks even, even cooler in person than it did in the videos. And so then I get it set up, and I'm like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna stream on Mixer um, to, to, of the gameplay. And I was like, huh, there's something wrong with Streamlabs. I can't get on Mixer. I'm like that's weird. Whatever. I'll, I'll just stream on Facebook. And then I go to power the system on and I can't log into my Xbox account. Like, what's going on? And then I pull my phone out, I launch the Xbox app. The Xbox app won't even connect. And I'm like, what is happening? Well, it turns out Friday night when my system showed up, Xbox Live in its entirety crashed. No one could get on the Xbox Live. To the point where you had Snoop Dogg coming on Twitter, calling out Microsoft and be like, fix your shit or I'm going to PlayStation. Real quick side note, <clears throat> Snoop, me to you. I'm a PlayStation guy. Um, it's, been a, it's been a few years, maybe. You, you don't want to make the leap to PlayStation due to reliability because <laughs> yeah. the PlayStation Network uh, <laughs> is held together by gum, urine, and more, <laughs> more gum. Whoa. I don't know. It's it's barely holding together. Just piss soaked gum wads. Well, that um, that damn. So stick with Microsoft. Yeah. Um. But anyways, so Thursday I download the game on my Project Scorpio because I just can't wait for Friday. I wanted to get a couple hours in. I download it and I don't try to play any multiplayer. I literally just try to play solo campaign and I get in and I play solo campaign for a couple chapters in act one and I'm happy and I go to bed. I did realize though, because I was watching mixer on another screen that people were trying to do campaign co-op or even like the new escape mode or even just online versus. And they were just sitting in queue timing out and being pushed back to the main menu over and over. And I was like, Oh boy. Oh, and I had heard, though, that they were going to release a patch in the morning, a Friday morning, that would hopefully correct this. So I go to work, I get home, I get my system, I'm excited. I heard, I, I did hear that they sent the patch out, Xbox Live goes down. So for two, two and a half hours, I'm just sitting there like, okay, well, this, this thing's a brick right now. I can't even patch it, you know, the initial patch it needs from pulling it out of the box. So let alone even install Gears from Game Pass because I can't get to Game Pass. And it was my first experience of a service like this where I pay a monthly fee to have access to a library of games, you know, and guess what? I can't access that library of games. It made me feel like, damn, I wish I had the physical copy. Now, I don't know if the physical copy would have made my situation any better. Like, could I have put the disc in and at least gotten to a campaign? Maybe I can't patch it, 
But could I have gotten to the campaign and just played solo offline because I had the disc? I don't know. The problem nowadays is that sometimes the discs are just, they're literally just keys. So there's that possibility that I would have had a physical copy, I would have thrown the disc in, and I would have had the same problem because I wouldn't have been able to pull the data that I needed to pull. Who knows? I, I'm not sure. But I still was frustrated. I wanted, I wanted to, uh, you know, to play this game. I'm so excited. So around midnight, I finally, or 11.30, I finally realized the servers are back up. And so we hop on and we play a little bit. And, you know, I'm like, cool, but I'm going to go to bed. I'm pretty bummed, you know, like this is like a big birthday gift for myself. And, and I didn't re and I really had all these plans to have this grand night. I had talked to Jazzy uh, Owl Zero, as many people know him now. I talked him into being able to uh, pull his Xbox out of the box that he had, he had formatted because he just wasn't using the Xbox anymore, so he had considered selling it. Pull it out, sign up for Game Pass Ultimate for $2 for two months, download Gears 5, and then we were going to, you know, and I would it'd be his first Gears experience, and we'd just co-op through the campaign. Like, that sounds really cool. And then it just happens where he's like, okay, I got it on, okay, I can't sign in. Which means I can't even, you know, I can't even uh, log into... Game Pass. I can't do any of that stuff. I'm like, damn it, man. So we just played League that night and, and end up watching people on Mixer struggle and yell and complain. And then, of course, see Snoop Dogg yelling and, you know, doing all that stuff. And we're like, we'll, we'll reconvene on Saturday because we had made the initial plans that Saturday was going to be a, hang day, a hangout day for, for Owl Zero and myself to just hang out and play games because we hadn't been able to, you know, since he had his kid. And so his, uh, you know, his significant other was super nice and was like, hey, you know what? You haven't really hung out with Rim at all. Like, I think you need to have a, like a, 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 guy's, a guy's day to play video games and just chill. I was like, I was like, she's awesome, dude. Like, tell her thank you because I, I, you know, I've, I've missed him. Like, we haven't had the, the time that we normally have, and it's understandable why. So we made the plans. We're like, cool. Then what we're going to do is we're going to co-stream the campaign of Gears and that way it'll be, and it'll be um, Jazzy's first experience to, to Gears. We get in, we, we log in, we start playing. He's having a good time. He's having a hard time with the, getting used to the, me the mechanics. Cause, cause it's a unique game. It's a unique game. And, and, and I think um, Invalid put it a good way last night when I was talking to him in, in chat is that it is, um, it is wonky. <laughs> it's not bad. It's just wonky. It's weird. And and once you adjust to it, there are things about it that I like more than other games. And there just are things that are just like it's different. And when I switch back to another game, it's, it takes a minute to get used to it, but I eventually do. So he gets used to it. We we go through Act One. He's having fun, but then we get to Act Two, and Act Two kind of opens the game up in a way that Gears never has allowed before. Gears has been very linear. Mm -hmm. And so um, this allows, this kind of opens up and allows you to have side missions and allows you to kind of do things that, you know, this is, I guess if this is, if you guys consider this a spoiler, this is like the only spoiler is that the game opens up. And I'm not going to talk about the setting in case you don't know where you're going. I'm not going to talk anything, but all I can say is that by the time we got near the end of Act 2, uh, Jazzy just stopped and was like, seriously, dude? This might be one of the coolest like levels in a video game that I've ever played. And by the time we finished that part of that chapter, he yeah, was like, I think this is actually the coolest level I've ever played in a video game. And he's right. It was beautiful. It was unique. It was so different. And that's the thing I like about Gears is that the story is good for sh like. We have so many shooters out there that like they try to do a story mode and they're half-assed all the time, right? Because they only care about competition. So this Gears isn't that way. I mean, like you can have you can say there's gear there's Gears games in the franchise that are not as memorable as others, but overall, you can't you can take five games of Gears, smack them all together, and sit there and say. And even if you wanted to take uh, you know um, Gears of War Judgment Day or whatever, like the prequel and stuff, so you take six games and smash them together. And you can really say this is one hell of a store overall grand story that travels multiple generations of, of families that you're following and things like that, that it really is awesome. 
it's, I'm so excited that they are trying to make a movie of it and stuff because it, it is, to me, it's that good that it deserves to be a film. It deserves to be, uh, that story needs to be told for the people that don't want to play video games. And so, um, we had a great time and, and like that, ex that moment that he had, like I was super happy I got to share it with him. But this is when like we had what would rip us out of the game is the bugs that would cause one of us to get booted out of the game randomly, and then the other person would then be frozen and, like, stuck in whatever room they were in. We both would have to kill the game and have to restart, jump back in. Problem is, you don't get to save whenever you want, so you fall back to your last checkpoint. We had this happen to us four times. Oh. The oof. last time was the killer. It was pretty much what broke, what broke us and finally had us call it a night. And that was because... We had finished a mission, and we had gotten into a very important cutscene. Very important. It kicked us in the middle of the cutscene. It kept the audio playing. Oh. So some of the excitement that you were about to find out, the things you were about to see and hear, you were hearing, but you couldn't visually see. And... Man. And what made it worse and what finally set it all off was that when we went back in, we had to redo the whole mission to get back to the cutscene. So, yeah. Man, it, that's bad. Yeah, it's right. It's so frustrating. And, like, that's again. That's almost Anthem. Yeah. It's Anthem-esque. Yeah, and again, the thing about it is, like, when these problems don't, it won't, are gone, when they're fixed, you are going to have potentially... And I'm speaking unfairly here because I don't have the whole campaign beat yet. And, and I it could it could Halo Five you. It could Halo Five me, but, but it won't. It won't. But I am really, really, really liking this right now to the point where like when this is finally all said and done and we can play and not have to worry about this this crap, it could be the best gears I've ever played. And that's hard to say when you think about like the first gears and how, and how they did some things like there'll be experiences from those, those gear, those games that like, you'll never be able to, to beat. But overall, I've really enjoyed this, the buildup of this, of the story so far. So the game, very cool, very pretty. I'm really impressed. Uh, I downloaded it on the PC, the Xbox one X. Um, I got to play on the PC with ray tracing and everything turned on with the new graphics card. Gorgeous. I mean, Compared to Gears 4, which had a horrible PC launch with tons of, like, to this day, Miggy, Miggy tried it just recently. To this day, it runs like shit on the PC. They never got it to work right. Gears 5 is a masterpiece on the PC as far as visuals. Uh, it looks great on the Xbox One X, so, you know, don't, don't get too upset. It looks really good on the console, but, um, yeah, I mean, once they figure out these server issues and, and everything... They're, they'll be great. It's just that's tough when you're when this is your launch and you're having this problem. And, uh, you know, it led me to think about one thing, and that was. This is that scene right now, what we're watching. Oh. <laughs> this is this is what the thing that happened. So. Um, but anyways. The. The thing that ha that this got me thinking about was Game Pass. So, you know, you made this big push for Game Pass, Game Pass Ultimate, Game Pass for PC. You built gears around all of it. You're going to have gears on PC, gears on Xbox, and it's all going to be available six days or four days early, is it? And then we get it the sixth. So, like, four days early from launch, and all of that's happening. And, like, you, um, you have to wonder the stress on the servers and 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 Microsoft not being ready for it really realistically causing all these problems you know like yes i'm not I'm, yes there there are some bugs that clearly the coalition the the developer is working through and they're patching their game but at the same time we had major xbox live problems we had server problems that you, that i don't blame directly on the coalition that i blame on microsoft's network and just and just like they seem to within a very short period of time all of a sudden things got better you know we're still having problems but they got better so it was one of those things like oh turn you know let's flip some more switches let's spin some more virtual machines up like whatever it takes 
let's make sure that these people can play this game but it just was surprising to me that um you know that that this was the launch that they weren't that they weren't better prepared for it well like i like i said this this isn't a crazy thing for playstation players because we've been continuously let down by playstation network this feels like like a newer thing for microsoft because back in the day especially when playstation was a free service and then microsoft was a paid service we used to always go well this is why you pay for xbox live because this doesn't happen so it, it is very surprising and and you've been a long time xbox player so maybe your recollection is better than mine but i don't remember the last time that we had a major outage from microsoft not I, okay so here's the thing xbox has been attacked just like sony's been attacked and there's been and and yes they have outages i mean everybody does but i mean out of out of the group i'd say you know xbox definitely has the best track record yeah but but can I sit there and say a game like at a launch of a game that is, is that is as important to this one? Um, I can't think of that. You know, like you know, I can't think of just like a complete and utter failure. Wait, wasn't there an attack on like the last Halo launch or something? Wasn't there an attack for the Halo Five launch that messed a lot of things up? So it was either a Halo launch or was a Call of Duty launch. So I yeah. could be confused. Um, I feel like you're. I feel like the Call of Duty actually might be the yeah uh, maybe that's what it was what and it could have been PlayStation of. that might not have been Xbox. But so. the big thing about like see that that is one thing where like it was an attack, and you know and I, this I would is different. yeah this is different this is this is struggle like this is Xbox and Microsoft struggling, and you know again they've managed like I'm not really bashing them like I know I'm not bashing Microsoft at all I know some people want to. I'm I'm still I'm pretty impressed with their reaction time on things because again they're a giant company it it takes a lot of effort to change direction of a ship when you're that big and that many people involved and all that stuff but the whole thing that I have is you you just you can't you can't have this happen around gears you can't have this happen around Halo you can't let that let let these uh, limitations hit and. You know, we, we you did you did um, some beta tests and you did some server load tests and you did these things. So, and yet we still are here having this problem. And that's so it it's, it, it definitely pulled you, pulled you out of the experience a little bit. Another big Gears fan is Xander from. I'm referencing Xander a ton, but we, we're talking about a lot of topics that are connected to him. Um, the the thing about about this all is that he's run into a lot of these problems. He ran into more of them than I did. He ran into bugs where he actually had to like backtrack in the game to, mm. uh, you know, to then be able to push forward because something glitched and, and didn't uh, allow him to move. You know, basically he hit a wall. He hit a wall that he couldn't pass. And so, you know, he was super frustrated. It was pulling him out. It was pulling him out of the experience. And, you know, those, those are things that you just cannot have happen because that will, that will, damage the reputation of the game right out the gate and, and you'll never re you won't recover from it but um you know the thing about his was the the backtracking and all that stuff it was bugs he was running into so the pat hopefully you know the patching that they've been releasing will fix it but you know that's thankfully that's something that i didn't run into too much i had issues where because i was playing co-op we have this robot named jack you know, and so this robot is our light when we're in dark areas. Well, he was only following uh, Jazzy. Oh. So if I wanted to go explore and say, I'll check out this room, you check out that room, I, I had no light. I was literally staying in the dark. Okay. What got even worse is that it glitched. The second I left Jazzy and we went to separate rooms, when I came back to Jazzy, I was, until I got into a new room with light to reset, where he would turn his light off, I was stuck in the dark, even if I stood by the robot at this point. And so, like, I'm basically like, all right, well, um, Jazzy, like, look around the room for collectibles because I literally am blind right now. I'm just walking around, and the only thing I could see was, like, you know, your suit has, like, the lights that glow blue yeah. and stuff, and, and Jack has lights that glow. So I would, that's, how I, that's how I would follow them because I was like, I have no other way to, uh, you know, to look. So, um, so just small things like that that I'm... Uh, it's disappointing and i haven't experienced it in a gears game before so i think that's why it upsets me even more is that, that i haven't had a letdown when it comes to a gears experience um ever 
but overall it's a it's a must if you're an xbox player if you're a gears fan like like yes you know maybe maybe you want to wait a week and let them patch some more but but at the same time it's uh it's a fun great looking game the story has already got me hooked and uh it's got jazzy hooked he's he's can't wait to find out what's going to happen and you know and i knew that's how i'd get him i knew if i got him a couple acts in because that's how gears got me was the story i wasn't necessarily huge in the competition level and competitive level of the game so it was the story and once i started connecting these characters um i i couldn't stop and that's where that's where he's at now and so i'm super glad that he's enjoying it that much and i don't even need to go and do a zilla update because that's my zilla update is is my gears of war experience with jazzy who first time gears player and and the experience he's having uh right now is super cool all right well that sounds like that's pretty awesome my my zilla update i'll i'll do one real quick and uh you know we'll We'll see if Miggy has a, a gaming moment of the week. He feels like chatting about it all. Um, <clears throat> but my, mine's a pretty quick one. I was recently gifted two new pieces to my video game collection uh, that are two of the coolest things I now have in my video game collection. Uh, and they were gifted to me by the person that I would say helped me start my video game collection. Uh, I have an older brother. And so it's logical when you have an older brother that they help to tribute to your video game collection. So um, he is going through a process of downsizing. He will uh, potentially be moving in, in the near future. So he had some things that, you know, he was like, hey, would you want some of this? I don't want to take it with me for moving. And he's like, I kind of thought I was going to have a big video game collection one day and kind of realized that it's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. He's like, so I thought these should be somewhere that is more of a little bit more of a video game collection and uh, the video game collection. He essentially helped me start. So my brother was like, would you like my virtual boy? And I was like, what? You have a virtual boy? And he's like, yeah, you know, I, I bought Alpha Buddy a few years back and I have tennis and Wario Land if you want it. I go, yeah, I want a virtual boy just because, I mean, you own one, you know, it's just a cool piece of Nintendo yeah. history to own. It's just an interesting thing. And obviously I had childhood memories of playing it. I played yours like the first week you, you yeah. came in contact with the and one you currently Wari have. Wario Land or whatever, Wario, is it Wario Land? It's or Wario Land, yeah. I think. Is like, when it's the best game on it. Yeah. And when you play it it actually is impressive in the sense of the depth that it, yeah, that it creates in the it's game cool. it's really cool it's just and it's a really cool piece to have in your collection because it's one of the few catastrophic failures that nintendo had yeah. so it's a cool piece to have i agree so so i was really excited you know he, he was he drove 10 hours more than 10 hours up north and he drove down he's like, oh yeah you know he got here he's like oh hey let me give you that virtual boy and i was like okay cool and uh, so he hands me the bag. He's like, oh, yeah, I threw a power glove in there for you, too. I'm like, what? You have a power glove? I go, well, now I have a power glove. So uh, what a, you know, another like weird oddity of, of Nintendo's history that my, my brother's, like, yeah, you know, in the same deal, I bought this uh, virtual boy off, off my buddy, bought a power glove, too. And he's like, obviously, I have no need for a power glove. So. Um, you know, I hooked up the Virtual Boy, played it a little bit. I actually don't have the uh, sensors for the Power Glove. He thinks he has those at his house somewhere. He oh, said, yeah. He said, he's like, yeah, if I find those, I'll bring them to you. I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's not like I'm probably ever going to actually try to play it. Yeah. It's just a, a cool thing to have. So game over, you know, of the week was, you know, receiving those gifts from my brother. And obviously I was very thankful and it was very cool of him to send those my way as he's yeah. downsizing. So now they're with, you know, again, a bunch of other video games at one point in time he owned. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I saw the uh, the photos or whatever, and I'm like, I was like, wow, where the hell did you get you, that stuff? You thought from? I was out balling out. I did. I was like, Virtual Boys aren't cheap. Why would he buy one? You know, like in my mind, I'm like, that doesn't seem like a move on his part, but uh, it made more sense once you explain. Cool to keep it in the family and, and keep it in a, a gamer's uh, collection. Yeah. So just go to like a resale. So cool, man. That's good. I like, I like always hearing when. Uh, People are adding some cool stuff to their collection. Yeah, I just felt like my my collection strengthened greatly just yeah. by those those two nice little pieces of Nintendo history. Absolutely. Uh, we got Player One Miggy for our, his first ever show. Do you have a uh, gaming moment of the week? Uh, yeah, real quick. Uh, gaming moment of the week is uh, I 
added uh, something to uh, I, I I enhanced Vita Island just a little bit, just Ooh, a little bit. Um, yeah. I managed, yeah, managed to get my hands on a PlayStation TV. Uh, mm. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks to my thanks to my buddy in the host seat over there. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> oh, I pressed um, wrong button. Wait, you? <laughs> you, um, you sold Miggy your PlayStation TV. I uh, acquired an additional PlayStation ah, TV. I still okay. have my PlayStation TV, but I acquired an additional one that I did not need. And I remembered that he had mentioned he was looking for one. So I said, hey, you know, are you still interested? And uh, he picked it up. Yeah, so. yeah. He just want to let you know you saved a bunch of goats' lives when you uh, when you text me that day because I was great. I don't think I was gonna make the sacrifice to, uh, to summon one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I just... oh, it certainly is a demon from the toilet. <laughs> yeah. is where the PlayStation TV is from. I mean, the cool thing the, the cool you thing still about have yours, it, right? Yeah, I didn't want to sell it to Miggy. You know, I, <laughs> yeah, you jerk. <laughs> I, but I, I need to own the worst video game system I've ever bought. So. But the cool thing about it is I don't know if you hooked it up, uh, Dead Eye, to play. But you um, know, I did. I'm not gonna spend forty dollars and never try it. <laughs> but forty dollars. But to play Persona Four Golden on the big screen, and it actually it actually looks great uh, playing on playing on the big screen. Um, I'm very happy just to experience that on on the big screen. I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. So yeah, yeah, that was that was the highlight of my week in Gears Five. Also, I don't know yeah, in Gears Five exactly, and I and I heard you were going through similar issues on the PC side with just with issue uh, yeah. lag and fatal errors. And, yep. Yeah, so it didn't matter where you were playing. People, people were having problems. Um, the, the thing that I found interesting about the PlayStation TV from looking, just doing a little bit of research recently when I acquired the extra one, I'm like, well, am I going to sell this thing? What am I going to do with it? Is the, um, the hacked versions of it and what people are doing with the hacked models of them. I'm like, the, they look, they actually are pretty cool. What, what you can do. I mean, similar to hacking a Vita. Yeah. So I mean, that was the main reason I held on to mine. Just... Yeah, yeah, and I figured you haven't touched it in so long that your firmware is nice and old, so you're in good shape. Super. Yeah, but anyways, I mean, uh, you know, he wanted one, and he had a purpose for it. Like he actually had a game that, like, why he wanted one. So that's very different than I thought he wanted. Like I realistically, when I when I initially asked him, he was like, "Yes, I want it." I was like, "Oh, he wants to hack it," but in all reality, like. That that might happen one day, but he actually had a legitimate reason why he wanted one. Every everything I own is hacked, so <laughs> yeah, I let this one slide by this time. Yeah, and I know I know you hate the thing because you did run into a bunch of its limitations. Um, but if there was a game that like it's you, a straight up lie, everything was a lie about the PlayStation TV. Everything was a lie about the PlayStation Vita. So why'd you think it was gonna be any different? I didn't have a Vita to know it and was a And you lie bought a then. PlayStation TV for $40 when they were literally handing them away. Like, please, God, take this. But guess Just what? take I it. Also Here's bought... three copies of Destiny 2. We'll give you the PlayStation Vita and those if you just buy a box of Kleenex. I also bought a Vita for $40. <laughs> great deal, great yeah, deal. Yeah, and you had a much better experience with that. Yeah, Vita's great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's uh, that's our Zilla update. We that's the attack on the news. We clumped it all together because we are running very long in this episode. It's uh, it's been a good episode. A lot of lots to talk about. So we're gonna just uh, pa pass through and remind people that uh, you know all the stuff we talked about and joining the community via Discord, GameZillaMedia.com, right on that homepage. You can join. That's where we talk about stuff like this every day. So you want to keep the conversation going with us and other people around the community, that's where you go. Um, we want to thank all of our patrons. So if, you, uh, if you're looking to take that next step, wanna, you want to support the, uh, the podcast here, you want to support Games Low Media, you want to go to patreon.com slash Games Low Media. That's where you can support us and you get some extra content. You get to influence the show. You, get to, you, get to, you just get extra stuff all revolving around Games Low Media. So... And then, uh, Dad, I want you to tell us about our other shows. We have a retro gaming podcast, The Legend of Retro. So, it's trash. So it, it's not trash. It's, <laughs> it's good. It's good when they invite me to be on as a guest. Otherwise, it's trash. Yeah, that's probably true. Okay. Um, good. No, it's a fantastic it's show. Good. Diving into classic gaming. Of course, Noobs and Dragons just starting a new campaign, a new season with Extra. all new noobs. Super trash now. Learning the way. It's not super trash now. It's probably better than your no ass. No Jandar on it. trash. 
Jandar was a jerk and he did, wasn't man enough to fight Helwig with his hands. Spoiler alert if you haven't made it there. Because Jandar wouldn't fight like a man. Like a man! Uh, I was smart. I was smart. I needed to survive for a few more episodes to actually finish the story, Mr. One-Off character over here. I was the greatest one-off character in Noobs and Dragons. It was, yeah, in Noobs and Dragons history, absolutely. And who knows? The new noobs could in, in encounter Hellwig. They should be uh, trepidatious in every step of their journey. Right. I keep telling them that one day I'm just going to be here in the studio when they show up to co- record and Craig's just going to laugh. Here's how they're yeah. gonna know that I'm about to do some terrible things. Here's dude. how I know like lurkers, right? We got Craig WK here that just chimed in. Like, here I go talking trash about his shows, and he's like, out of nowhere, he goes, "Curse the the handsome <laughs> devil, Craig WK, and all his amazing shows." Uh, but yeah, that um, look at look at him just hiding out in the shadows, just lurking, hiding be, out in the being, shadows, being Craig. Uh, of course, Noiseland Arcade. It's our Simpsons show. Hosted by the aforementioned Craig WK. <laughs> We're show on the network. Uh, we have Last Action Podcast, all about action movies. Uh, not going to tell you what, but they did invite me to come in and record a show with them this Friday. So stay tuned in uh, the coming weeks because I'm going to bring a mad level of expertise. The last couple times they've had me on was not in my wheelhouse. They have invited me to do something, to record a show about a movie that is a jam. So wait, they invited you on the show? Last Action Podcast invited me on okay. the show. Okay, I, I retract the statement, Noiseland Arcade, you're okay. Worst, last Action Podcast, worst podcast on the network. You know that Anybody that invites <laughs> Deadeye to be on a show, you're a fool. Okay? To be fair, I'm stuck with them. The only, show I've, the only show I've not yet been on is the Noiseland Arcade, but I have an open invite to show up anytime I want. Uh, I was about to say, yeah, you're pretty much a permanent guest at that point. So I... I, I, I Frank said I could pick my episode because I'm a big Simpsons fan. Uh, and then uh, I think I think that covers him. Right? Yeah, I do want to give a big shout out to the Legend of Retro guys. Uh, I know we were joking around, but they did just uh, get an achievement via Apple. And that is we were announced that we broke into the top 1,000 podcasts within uh, our category uh, with the Legend of Retro. So uh, people might be like, top 1,000, that's not that great. But I'm like, yeah, but when you're buried amongst millions of podcasts... Being top thousand is something to be proud about. So yeah. that's uh, that's a uh, that's a highlight for them. Uh, we're, we're gonna have to look more into it with the uh, information that Apple sent us. But the initial email was just to congratulate us that we had broken broken that uh, that threshold. Congratulations, boys! Yeah. But uh, that's a wrap for this episode of the Gamezilla podcast. Again, go to gamezillamedia.com and join our uh, join our Discord and get involved with the community. Yeah, and uh, thanks for tuning in to episode 277 of uh, the, po- the Games Old Podcast. We want to welcome once again Player One Miggy. He's going to be hanging out with us here for the f- foreseeable future until we drive him crazy and he runs away uh, screaming. But for now, we are super thankful he's here and all the video work that you've been watching here live on twitch.tv slash Media. It is all thanks to him. A lot of the uh, video work that you see done on YouTube and that you're going to start seeing in the vlogging and stuff like that on the website. It's, it's all going to be thanks to Player One Miggy. So make sure that uh, if you're joining the Discord, if you're talking on social media, um, you know, give him a big thanks show, uh, and show the appreciation for his hard work. Yay, golf Sincere clap. Sincere clap. Golf clap. I was so and cry. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out. Remember, we are your elite free DLC for all your gaming news. And until next time, game, game on. on.